If you grew up in the mid-2000s, there's a huge chance you entertained yourself with one of these three devices. An Xbox 360, an iPod Touch, and a Nintendo DS. And if you didn't, well, I am so sorry. These were insanely popular growing up, and lucky for me, I indulged in all these ways of entertainment. My brother owned a 360, I knew a ton of people with iPod Touches, and of course with the DS, I mean, as a kid, this was just a requirement. I have tons of memories playing this thing, from taking it on long car trips, to playing with my siblings with DS Download Play, to messing around and drawing little messages on PictoChat. I didn't have a ton of games for the system, but the games I did did have were a huge source of entertainment during my childhood. And the one that I chose to talk about today is the one and only Super Mario 64 DS. I remember beating this game to 100% completion, and even though I played through the entire main adventure, most of my nostalgia actually stems from the Rec Room, a side mode slash compilation of little touchscreen minigames. These minigames were pretty bare bones for the most part, but I found myself playing these a lot. They were addictive, and some of them even gave me a little taste of what an evening is like in Sin City, Las Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, you, you heard me right. Today, I'm opening up the Nostalgia Vault and going all in. So sit back, relax, as I reminisce about some specific minigames that taught me how to, <laughs> that taught me how to gamble. Welcome to Nostalgia Vault, the show where I reminisce and give myself therapy sessions. Okay, we're not doing this bit the whole video. <laughs> I do not have a gambling addiction. Kids, don't don't gamble. It, it's not wise. Man, it's been a while since I've been back in this chair and sitting in front of the camera, and it just feels really good uh, to be back. And so today on Nostalgia Vault, I'm gonna be opening up a little section of it and talking about uh, a very specific part of my childhood, which involved the DS. Man, I played the Nintendo DS a lot. I was a Nintendo dude, as you can tell by my channel and whatnot, but I played a lot of the Wii, I played a lot of the DS, and in that DS era, I played it so much, in fact, that I wore through two different DS lights, and the first one I played a ton, and eventually, uh, me and my brother were kind of being rowdy, and I had my DS, and it fell on the ground, and it broke, and so he had to lend me his DS until that one got repaired, or we got a new one, or whatever and so I played that one a lot and then I played the second one so much that both of the L and R triggers uh, were completely dysfunctional they did not work they didn't do anything and so I couldn't really play games like uh, Mario Kart DS correctly because uh, both triggers were just completely out of commission <laughs> So I played a lot of the DS as you can tell I didn't have a lot of games for the system I was pretty limited. I mean as a kid obviously I'm sure a lot of you experienced this as well But uh, you're pretty limited on what games you get and so I remember getting uh, new Super Mario Bros Mario Luigi Bowser's Inside Story Mario Kart DS uh, I had Kirby Superstar Ultra and WarioWare DIY, and so I had I had a decent amount of games, but not as many as others. <laughs> but man, the games I did play, uh, I had a blast playing, and I had a lot of different memories with all sorts of them, and I would love to go into more detail on uh, my DS era and more of these DS games in the future, but for now I'm focusing on one today. I still vaguely remember the day when I got my DS Lite. Uh, it was me, my older brother, and my dad, and we uh, went to GameStop, and uh, we got, each one of us got a DS Lite, well, me and my brother, and uh, I remember selecting a blue DS Lite. It was clean, it was, it was awesome, and I was like, let's go. <laughs> and uh, I, we also got to select one game uh, for our DS's and I remember looking through and seeing like new Super Mario Bros on the shelf and um, I don't remember exactly when I got it and how many games were out but in scanning through the library of games I came across a game uh, Super Mario 64 DS now I had my experiences with Super Mario 64 and so seeing Super Mario 64 DS uh, with all the characters in the front and all this different things, I just remember, I'm like, dude, I want this game. 
This game looks amazing. And I'm glad I chose this one because this had a lot of content and a lot of meat on its bones. And it was such a, just a, an amazing adventure. This was the game, my very first DS experience. And I really loved it. And, I, and, it, and it's just, it's a, it's a good game. I really like it. I know it gets a lot of flack for its controls nowadays, but back then, Super Mario 64 DS was amazing, having four playable characters, 150 stars to collect, and having the whole Mario 64 adventure all crammed portably was amazing. As a kid, I didn't really know like what game to select or, or like, I didn't really know a lot about each game or, or, or you know all the news surrounding it or whatever. I just looked at the cover, looked at what it had on the back or whatever, and if it looked interesting, I grabbed it and I'm so glad I chose Super Mario 64 DS because it was a big game. It was a big adventure and I just, I had a ton of fun with it. As you heard in the intro, um, even though I played through the main adventure, I played through the whole entire game to 100% completion, a lot of my nostalgia is actually found in a side mode within the game. Throughout the adventure, uh, I remember you would find these random uh, rabbits kind of like just running in specific locations within the hub world. And so you would be running around the castle and all of a sudden there's just this random rabbit running around. Uh, your job was to find these rabbits and to catch them. And they would give you little keys to unlock certain things in the side mode. Uh, called the Rec Room. And so there was kind of just this side fetch quest. Uh, they didn't give you stars or anything. Uh, maybe a couple of them did. But uh, most of them gave you new mini games in this side uh, rec room. And so that's kind of what I want to focus on today is the side mode, the rec room. Uh, I played a ton of rec room mini games. Just, just, it, it was a lot. <laughs> I think what made these uh, mini games just so um, fun and just kind of uh, revolutionary when I guess it would be kind of the right word you had the dual screen, the DS, the dual screen with the touch screen on the bottom. And this was just kind of a brand new concept and each DS had a stylist. And so all these mini games uh, were kind of tech demos to display not only the uh, power of the DS uh, in some mini games, um, a lot of them were bare bones, but uh, but not only the power, but just the touchscreen capabilities of the system. And they just made it super unique and super fun to use uh, the touchscreen. Super Mario 64 DS was kind of the main uh, game that kind of everyone remembers these mini games in. And so the Rec Room was it wasn't just influential to me. I know that for a fact. These were pretty popular to a lot of people. I mean, some of these mini games were just so, um, just so sinking addictive. Like, uh, for example, I really loved the wanted mini game where you had to uh, pick out the right face um, that was on the wanted screen. And then on the bottom, there was a bunch of different faces kind of moving around and you had to select the right one to gain a point. And a lot of these mini games, I think almost every single one was like endless, where you just kept going, kept going and tried to get a high score. There wasn't really any depth to them. Like I said, they're pretty bare bones. And so a lot of these were just high score mini games. And so you had games like the Wanted um, mini game. You had the, I really loved the Mario trampoline. You had to like draw these little trampolines to bounce Mario and keep them, uh, keep them up or, 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 you know, like just keep that. <laughs> you had to, you had to keep them in the air. Jeez, what in the world? <laughs> there was this bomb arm defender one where you had to pull back the bomb or pull back like these cannonballs to, uh, defend these air attack of all these like parachuting bomb bombs uh, and that one was super satisfying and I really I really loved this pachinko game all you really need to do was just pull back this like pinball thing um, and shoot balls and they would bounce around and you would just get a high score through that um, and I just <laughs> I just I played that one a lot and even going back and playing some of these mini games man, they were actually addictive like they're addicting and that pachinko one specifically I actually still have my original cop copy of Super Mario 64 uh, DS and looking at my old high scores for some of these games like you can tell 
I played them a lot. <laughs> the pachinko ones specifically, I had a high score of like 7,400 and something. And I, I tried my best to get even remotely close to it and I couldn't even get on my top 10 leaderboard. A lot of these mini games were pretty bare bones and like high score specific or high score oriented and so you just had to try and get the best high score. I couldn't even get to the top five or top 10 leaderboard of my previous um, high scores from my childhood. Like, I don't know, I'll put up like the a screenshot or a picture of my high score right here. I don't know if that's an impressive score or not, or if anyone's gotten remotely close to that. I'd really be curious to know your scores on this Pachinko one, but I couldn't even get close to that high score. It's pretty insane. <laughs> so looking at the high scores for a lot of these games, you can tell I played these ones a lot. There was this one snowball mini game uh, that me and specifically my sister actually uh, liked a lot. It was a snowball mini game where you had to like slide uh, the stylist up to kind of like get the ball rolling and then it would get bigger and bigger and you just kept sliding up for it to get faster and faster and you would try and get a good time and I remember my sister specifically was really good at this one because she came up with this strategy where you would flip the DS um, upside down and instead of sliding up, she would slide down. Uh, and it actually worked really well. Uh, I don't know why, but you just, it felt like you could slide the stylist downwards faster. So it wasn't just me that really enjoyed these. Um, I just remember uh, a lot of my siblings liked them too. And they were just, again, they were bare bones, but I think because of the um, revolutionary kind of like the touch screen kind of trend coming into the mainstream, uh, these were just fun and new and original, uh, and they were just a blast to play. I loved them a lot. Now, each of these mini games were categorized by characters. They're, they're kind of categorized in specific ways. I think Yoshi had like puzzle-esque mini games. Mario had kind of more action-oriented mini games where you had to uh, keep like Mario's afloat or, you know, like with the trampoline mini game I mentioned earlier. And Wario had kind of a mixture of everything like Pachinko or the Snowman mini game or the Bomb Defender mini game. And then Luigi, had a unique set of mini games. Luigi's mini games were all about card games, or I should say casino themed games. You had uh, a full on slot machine, you had a full on roulette wheel, uh, you had freaking poker, you had a, a full functional one on one poker, picture poker with Luigi, and he had like even like a dealer's outfit you had you could see toads in the background as waiters like this was full on a casino experience on a mario game intended for kids or mostly kids <laughs> so okay i think looking back it's funny because nowadays i feel like nintendo kind of has more of a um disney-esque persona where they don't really want to ruin the reputation of like kid-friendly content, and a lot of that can be for their downfall nowadays, honestly, but uh, back then, I feel like they, they still had kind of that persona, but definitely not as intense. So seeing something like this in the present day is just so fascinating and so funny to me. Because <laughs> you think about like, how many kids were introduced to the concept of betting and poker and like gambling because of Mario on the DS. I know I was. <laughs> Luigi's Picture Poker was definitely like my first introduction to something like that, but I knew of playing cards. I knew of all that type of stuff and like poker and whatever. But I think Luigi's Picture Poker was truly the like, I guess what maybe started my love for like card games. Um, again, I do not endorse gambling. I I, 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 I I would never gamble with money. I think that's the dumbest thing ever, really. But I do love the game of poker. I think the concept of poker is fun and and just reading people's tells or or just kind of like, just just playing poker for fun or whatever. Like, I, I, and I love card games. It's just, I think it was just funny looking back and seeing that I'm sure Luigi 
introduced a lot of kids to the concept of gambling and the concept of slot machines and the concept of roulette wheels. And I played Luigi's Picture Poker a ton. Oh my goodness. And some of these card games were really fun to play. The excitement of a roulette wheel on the DS was pretty fun. Um, and, and it was just like all these different little mini games. It kind of currently blows my mind that Nintendo would do something like this. Uh, I don't know if they would do it to the extent they did back then, um, but it's just super funny to me that Luigi introduced me kind of to this, um, to the concept of like a casino and, and gambling. And it was just like, uh, it's just so funny to me, honestly. It's really funny. Again, I don't endorse gambling at all. I think it's dumb, but uh, if you're ever interested in doing something like that, uh, Luigi's Picture Poker is pretty fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's pretty fun. <laughs> I think one of the coolest features about these mini games was uh, the DS had a feature called DS Download Play. New Super Mario Bros. had this feature where you could play uh, these mini games uh, with local multiplayer, and you wouldn't you wouldn't require um, another cartridge. And so there was a lot of times where my siblings and I uh, would play these um, mini games on car trips. And some of these mini games were perfect for a concept like this because they didn't take a lot of power to play, and so there wasn't really like bad connection issues at all or any intense issues or whatever the case may be but these were just so perfect for local multiplayer and just time killers i remember you could literally play picture poker with four different players like you could literally play poker with four local multiplayer and you could play an actual game of poker on the ds which is amazing. <laughs> there was another mini game I remember where you would have to like dodge and maneuver around like these fireballs. You would have to like drag this bomb bomb around and whoever survived the longest won. There was another one like where uh, it was like a snowball fight and you would have to collect snowballs as Yoshis and throw them across the uh, plane. And there was just so many amazing memories I had of playing these games on car trips specifically. Uh, these were just amazing time killers and they were really um, just fun, period. <laughs> they were fun, it was just, it was super fun. I had a lot of memories on the DS and for some reason, these mini games and the rec room and, and, and all these different mini games were just a, for some reason I can remember a lot of these games vividly. It's probably because I played them a lot, but also they were just very charming. And I think Luigi's Picture Poker is probably just one that uh, fascinates me the most, uh, especially with how Nintendo runs their organization nowadays. So it's really fun seeing kind of the more, not rebellious, but just like, yeah, like more on edge Nintendo. The DS had a lot of great memories, but Super Mario 64 DS had a lot of those. Today was just kind of highlighting the specifics of Super Mario 64 DS uh, and the Rec Room specifically. These mini games hold a special place in my heart and I know they hold a special place in many people's hearts because I know I'm not the only one who remembers these. Uh, and so if you have any memories of Super Mario 64 DS or these Rec Room specific games, I would love to hear all of them down below in the comments. Nostalgia is such a uh, fascinating feeling to me and this show isn't just for me to express those feelings but it's also kind of just to relay a message of opening up your nostalgia vault you know not to keep it hidden uh and so again if you have any memories uh please feel free to share any of them down below in the comments but uh, thanks for allowing me to open up my nostalgia vault and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Definitely down the line, I'll share some more experiences and unique uh, stories with my other DS games. But for now, I just wanted to focus on the rec room of Super Mario 64 DS. So thanks for watching uh, and I will hopefully see you guys really soon. So we'll catch you later. <laughs>